अलाइंग एलिमेंट्स आर यू नो एलिमेंट सम एलिमेंट्स विच आर मिक्सड इन स्टील टू गेट सम इम्प्रूव प्रॉपर्टीज और गेट सम डिजायर्ड प्रॉपर्टीज सो द मेन कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट ऑफ स्टील इज आयरन आयरन इज नॉट एन अलाइंग एलिमेंट रेदर आयरन इज द मेन कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट ऑफ स्टील and the alloying elements are like carbon sulfur manganese phosphorus silicon copper chromium nickel molybdenum niobium vanadium aluminum so these are the elements which can be added in uh, in steel to improve the properties of steel so now i will discuss each element one by one this is very important for a welding engineer or for a mechanical engineer also these things are very important so let's understand one by one first we'll understand about carbon so mostly carbon in steel presents uh, you know uh, from 0.1% to 1.5% but the steel which we use widely is mild steel and in mild steel the percentage of carbon is between 0.15% to 0.30% now we'll understand the effect what uh, what is the effect of carbon on steel so with the help of carbon we can increase the tensile strength and hardness means if we increase the carbon that tensile strength and hardness of the steel will increase whereas the ductility will decrease so this i'll explain with the help of a graph friends here i am having one graph and in this graph on the horizontal line the percentage of carbon is written here 0.1 0.2 0.3 0.4 like that percentage of carbon is written so first we'll see this line represents the ductility here you can see that ductility is decreasing as carbon is increasing the ductility is going on go on increasing hence with the increase of carbon ductility decreases now we'll see hardness see here hardness is getting increased gradually so with the increase of percentage of carbon the hardness increases now we'll see the tensile strength here we see the tensile strength is increasing increasing but after certain point of time or after certain limit this tensile strength is getting decreased also so this is 0.83 so up to 0.83% of carbon the tensile strength increases and after 0.83 the tensile strength decreases so this is about ductility hardness tensile strength now friends what will happen to toughness this you will comment so i want you all to comment what will happen to toughness if we increase carbon and this is not very tough this is very simple so please comment uh, your answer in the comment box now the second alloying element is sulfur see friends what happens sulfur presents in a very small amount it means less than 0.05% in steel and what is the effect of sulfur see what happens sulfur reacts with the iron and form fes and the major drawback of fes that it has a low melting point that is very low if we compare the steel 1200 degrees celsius and this low melting point causes hot shortness in steel hot shortness what is hot shortness the hot shortness is nothing but loss of ductility at higher temperature how it happens i'll explain you see just for example see the grain boundaries are like this you know this is for example not exactly the grain boundaries are the like this but just for example what happens grain boundaries is a grain boundaries of steel what happens fes is formed the sulfur reacts with carb, uh, steel and iron reacts with iron and fes is formed and this fes gets accumulated at the boundaries so at the boundaries the fes will be accumulated like this this is our steel or crystal structure of steel and at the boundaries the fes will be accumulated and since fes has low melting point low melting point then steel then what happens if we will heat the steel so at 1200 degrees celsius only this boundary the fes will start 
melting and the component will break or component crack can occur at the boundaries that is why it is called as loss of ductility at higher temperature means at higher temperature this component will break why because due to the low melting point at the boundaries this will break so what happens due to this fes solidification cracking and hz liquefaction cracks you know increases or fes promotes these cracks so if you don't know what is solidification cracking and hz liquefaction cracks i have made a separate video on welding defects there you can go and watch what is solidification cracking and hz liquefaction cracks so fes promotes this type of cracks but fes helps also where it helps it helps in chip formation so mostly if you have to weld then it is bad but if you have to machine that product then fes helps in chip formation due to the presence of fes the chips are formed fast and machining is done faster uh, fes is present in 0.08% to 0.35% in free machining steels and it this steel can be machined very fast now after sulfur we will understand, understand about manganese so manganese is present up to 1.65% in steel manganese is very important because it removes the ill effects of the sulfur also see what happens manganese combines with sulfur and forms mns and again manganese combine with the oxygen also and it forms mno see oxygen is very dangerous for iron why because it it oxidizes the iron and many uh, you know ill effects are happened so oxygen should be avoided so manganese acts as a you know good cause or is it what it does it uh, you know combines with the sulfur and oxygen and forms a separate product mns and mno and this mns and mno reduce the amount of sulfur and oxygen which and this as a whole mns and mno also removed as slag also so due to this what happens the fracture toughness of a steel increases yield strength of steel increases and chances of solidification cracks decreases chances of solidification cracks decreases so as we had read earlier fes promotes solidification cracking and now this sulfur will not you know sulfur will not mix with iron instead of that sulfur will mix with mns and less number of fes will be promote uh, formed and hence chances of solidification cracking will be less so after sulfur will read manganese will read phosphorus so phosphorus is present up to 0.05% and again phosphorus combines with iron and iron and forms fe3p fe3p is again dangerous because it causes cold shortness what is cold shortness so it is just opposite to hot shortness in hot shortness material was becoming brittle at higher temperatures in cold shortness material becomes brittle at low temperatures so just you know for your understanding let me explain this short this short is a english word in old english short was used to you know or short was synonymous to crack in old english so this is how this word has formed cold shortness means cold crack crack during cold temperature so this is how this word has been formed now it is easy to remember whenever this cold shortness uh, uh, this term will be mentioned uh, your mind will you know uh, come to a conclusion that um, cracks during cold temperature so with uh, this what happens the fracture toughness of phosphorus decreases and ductility also decreases hence phosphorus is almost unwanted in steel here with the help of a graph you can understand here the temperature is 0 degree celsius then minus 10 minus 20 here you can see the ductility is more or the toughness is more now as the temperature is decreasing the toughness is also getting decreased and at point of at certain point of time the steel is completely becoming brittle this point is known as ductile to brittle transition point dbt now friends 
after phosphorus we will understand silicon so silicon acts as a deoxidizer or it is also called as killing agent see first silicon is present in steel uh, means amount of silicon is 0.05% to 0.3% it acts as a killing agent why it acts as a killing agent because it promotes deoxidation by forming SiO2 see the oxygen which is present in the steel during steel making process if that oxygen will mix with the iron then some dangerous things will happen so what happens if silicon is present there then silicon has a greater affinity with oxygen hence the oxygen instead of reacting with the iron it will combine with the silicon and it will form SiO2 hence the steel will remain intact that's why it is also called as killing agent so what is killing agent removing oxygen from the molten steel so silicon combines with the oxygen and hence it forms SiO2 and hence the oxygen level gets decreased and if oxygen level, uh, level gets decreased in the steel then that steel becomes inactive or steel will you know not uh, get oxidized one more you know benefit of silicon is that it promotes fluidity of molten steel so if fluidity is more it is useful in casting and also in the weldability also increases so after silicon copper with copper the corrosion resistance get increased hence it is used for weathering steel or cotton steel see weathering steel or cotton steel are nothing but you know if some corrosive environment is there so this cotton steel you know try to uh, uh, it, this cotton steel has more resistivity in corrosive environment and it is used in cotton steel why because of more corrosion resistance and hardness also gets increases so when hardness of steel increases when copper and nickel are mixed in equal proportion 1.25 percent each so then we'll discuss about chromium so with the help of chromium corrosion resistance increases and see maintains a strength of steel at elevated temperature meter at higher temperatures the strength of steel remains same due to the chromium only again hardenability also increases with the chromium now next is nickel with the help of nickel the fracture toughness increases especially at sub zero temperature sub zero means less than at less than zero temperatures the fracture toughness are improved with the help of nickel only then corrosion resistance also increases strength increases ductility also increases so these improved properties are obtained when alloyed more than eight percent nickel now molybdenum molybdenum is you know present in uh, you know 0 0.5 percent to 4 percent and it improves strength and creep resistance of steel at higher temperature please remember this with the help of molybdenum the creep resistance and strength is increased at higher temperature services or for higher temperature services these are used then we'll have niobium so friends niobium combines with steel to form niobium carbide and carbonitride precipitates so what is the benefit of this so since it reacts to form niobium carbide and carbonitride this helps in increase increasing the strength of steel again 0.05 percent of niobium if present in steel it produce produce significant increase in strength also and one more importance of niobium is that it refines the grain size and if you refine the grain size the toughness is improved so after niobium we will understand vanadium so vanadium is present in steel and the range it is 0.05 percent to 0.10 so this is the amount of vanadium which is generally remains in steel and the effect is of vanadium is the strength is increased with the help of vanadium finally we have aluminium like silicon aluminium also acts as a killing agent or it acts as a deoxidizer in steel making process how it it is because the aluminium reacts or combines with the oxygen and form al2o3 one more benefit of aluminium is that it combines with nitrogen to form aluminium nitride 
एंड दिस एल्यूमिनियम नाइट्राइड इंक्रीजेस द टफनेस ऑफ द स्टील